Okay guys, welcome back to Frugal Homestead. So today, just so everybody's on the same page, we're gonna talk about the grid tie system. So first, I need to share with everyone, for those of you that are new, that we have 2,850 watts of solar on this property. Now it runs into this grid tie, which then runs into our box. Offsetting our usage, it is not net metered. We do not get paid for it. It just offsets power, but things have changed. I've done some testing, things have definitely changed, so we're gonna be making some changes. Now, when I say things have changed, my power bill has changed, probably like a lot of yours has, just with regular taxes, fees, rates going up, yeah, yeah. But my usage has been going down, but my usage cost is going up. So something definitely has changed. Now, about a year and a half ago, I was having a debate with someone in a solar group. So I did some testing. So what I did was the breaker that this is on was the only one that was on. I turned every other breaker off except for the main, obviously. I took a picture of my meter and it was putting out about a thousand watts like it is right now. And then I came back an hour later and then an hour later and my meter never moved. Well, with my bill looking kind of weird, I said, I better recheck that. Something seems off here. So, on a day when I was getting about a thousand watts in an hour, I shut everything down again and repeated the process. Now, I took my first picture so I could tell where I was at. And then I came back an hour later after everything was turned off and then took another picture. And I think you can guess the results. I had another full kilowatt hour on there. What's that mean? Thousand watts running in continuously for an hour, kilowatt hour. So I went through a whole second hour to make sure and same result. So what it's come to is I am actually producing more power than I'm using. It's going back in the grid and they've learned a way to actually charge me for that. It sounds ridiculous, but they did it. Before they did not, I had tested it multiple times. So, where we're at now. I myself have brought down my usage of electric heavily, which is part of the problem. This year, we used a little bit of electric, but mostly we used propane because it was super cheap this year to heat the house. I had been using a wood burning furnace before that, but it had a fan that ran all day. So you can just imagine the power it was pulling. This was offsetting that and we were just net zeroing, breaking even. Now, most houses probably use enough that they would run this system and they'd never get back charged. There's still nothing wrong with doing it this way. You just need to size your system appropriately. Now that said, you could also get the shunt or the cutoff meter you can get for this. And basically it won't let you back feed extra power. All right, it just shuts it down. So if you're ever at a point where your house is not using enough wattage, then it's got little clamps that'll go on your main line and basically tell the unit to shut down, don't send it back. Now they have one for this grow watt unit. I just don't feel the necessity to buy it. So I wanna go over what our plans are gonna be and how we're gonna solve this short and long term. Okay, so we're on the back porch now and if you look up, we have six solar panels just above us. Now on the other side of the building behind me, we've got four more. You can check out our previous videos if you wanna see those. But the idea here is to unhook all these and take them down, all right? Now, once we have them down, they will go down to the tiny house to be put on an off-grid system. We will continue the other four into the grid tie, which should lower it down to where it's only producing as much as we are using continuously. Now, in the future, we will decide if we want to continue this way or if I just want to take all the panels to off grid because I don't see a whole lot of point in grid tie if there's even a chance I can get charged. It just doesn't make any sense. But it's pretty simple setup here. We get to take these down. I wanted to do this anyways. I'm gonna take and reuse the posts in another project. These will all go on the roof of the new shed we're building down at the tiny house that we're gonna be living in. And that way, if power goes out, I can have them go down to my batteries through the charger 
and be able to have invertible power down there anytime there's a blackout or anytime you know storms bring down the wires because it does happen a lot here so no we don't really have a full-on idea of if we're going to keep this actual grid tie or not it served me really well but i know i could put it on ebay if i wanted to sell it but putting a limiter on it is not that hard it's actually made to do it so you know what i would say to anyone who wants to start grid tying like this make sure you have a limiter on it or make sure you're using well above the power that you know this thing can use now i will say most times everybody's power usage is probably plenty it's just we have a ridiculous low amount of power usage just because of how we live our lives but i'll keep you guys informed as to what all changes what all transpires i'm sure i'll make some videos on it as we pull things down move things to different things and set them up but i appreciate you guys being here and i'll see you guys in the next one